<laughs> the shadow knows. <laughs> Again, Blue Coal Dealers present radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, The Bride of Death. The Shadow begins his exciting adventure in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'd like to make a suggestion to all you homeowners. To protect your family's health and save real money in the bargain, burn Blue Coal. For blue coal gives you uniform, healthful, economical heat all winter long. Its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when you're buying fuel, insist on blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest hard coal. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. Who are you? What do you want at Casa Mane at this hour of the night? May I come in? Oh, all right. I, uh, I'm the Reverend Colby from the fishing village below. I want to see Mrs. Ackley. She has retired. Come tomorrow. I must see her tonight. Why? My daughter, Isabel, is here. She's Mrs. Ackley's companion, but I've come to take her home. Ah, the girl, Isabel. She does not wish to leave. I've come to fetch her. I'm a man of the cloth, a man of peace, but I will not leave without her. Let me by. Parker, Matar, visitor, stop him. Yes, Matar, if you command. Let go of me. Take your hands off me, you heathen devils. Put him out. Keep him out. Wait. Mrs. Duckley. I will see him. How dare you break into my house this way, Reverend Colby? Because I will not have my daughter stay in a house that harbors evildoers, Mrs. Ackley. There's talk in the village of heathen rites performed by this man who calls himself Prophet of the Ancient One. This man you brought to a Christian place from some Asiatic sinkhole of the godless. Be careful how you speak in the presence of the Prophet. You mean that man there? Yes, Minister. I am the Prophet. Prophet? Where is my daughter Isabel? She is leaving this house on the cliff tonight. Tell Reverend Colby she does not wish to go. I... Tell him, Mrs. Ackley. Your daughter, Isabel, does not wish to go. Good night, Reverend Colby. I... I do not believe you. Let me see her. Let her tell me herself. She does not wish to see you. Get beyond the iron gates quickly, for in five minutes my servants will release my trained guardians. I'm not afraid of that unholy pack of black panthers of yours. They are dangerous, Minister. Trained in my native land. Trained to hunt and kill animals or men. Go now. Very well. I'm going, but I'll be back. I'll be back. Stop it. Why? Why do the panthers scream? It is an omen. Of death. Who's death? Tell me. The future is so plain to you. Tell me who is going to die. I see the minister, Reverend Colby, standing in the pulpit of his church, turning the simple fishing folks against you, Mrs. Ackley. Reverend Colby is going to die. But how? The wrath of the Ancient One will strike him down with the voice of thunder and the tongue of fire. Three days ago this night, I went to Mrs. Ackley's house on the cliff to bring my own daughter, Isabel Colby, home. I could not see her. 
could not speak to her. She is lost to me, and therefore let my own sorrow be a warning to those of you in this village whose sons and daughters may go to that house of the devil, to this man who dares desecrate the name of prophet. Amen. Now, let us offer a prayer for the mistress of Kasamane. Though rich in worldly goods and worldly knowledge, and so long one of us, kindly and generous until of late, and now ailing in mind and spirit, who hath turned from God to follow the pathway of a disciple of Satan. Let us pray. We beseech thee, have mercy on this poor lost one who hath strayed from the fall. <laughs> And so in the midst of those who perished with him and whom he loves so well, we return the body of our beloved minister, Reverend Colby, return him to the earth, ashes unto ashes, dust unto dust. Here we are, Margot. Yes, but where, Lamont? The fog's so thick I can't see a thing. This is the little village where the Reverend Colby and ten of his parishioners were killed by a mysterious explosion in his church. Oh, that was horrible. But, Lamont, it happened days ago. What can we do? Murder has been committed, Margot. Wholesale murder, and the killer or killers are still at large. But according to the newspaper report... Yes, I know. The paper said the authorities have been unable to uncover a possible motive. Investigation is hampered by the refusal of the fisher folk of this quaint little village to cooperate. Oh, perhaps they're afraid to talk, Lamont. Yes, it's surprising what superstition can do. What about this rich Mrs. Ackley you were talking about, Lamont? Where does she fit into the picture? I don't know, Margot. All I know is that about three months ago, she returned from the Far East with a man who calls himself the Prophet. This man claims to be the leader of a cult worshipping a deity known as the Ancient One. Is there such a cult? There was, but it was stamped out nearly five centuries ago because its ceremonies and rituals included human sacrifice. Human sacrifice? Yes. Oh, how horrible. Then you think there is a connection between the so-called prophet, the destruction of this Christian church, and the murder of Reverend Colby? Margot, I don't know. I'm going into that cottage down the road. We'll ask some questions. I'll wait in the car. Oh, that awful foghorn. It gives me the creeps. You'll be safe here, Margot, but don't get out of the car. All right. Now, Lamont Cranston and the Shadow are going to find out something more about this mystery of the house on the cliff. Yes? Someone's at the door. Don't answer. Uh, why not, Marthy? You think it's a ghost from the marshes or that devil from the cliff house? Uh, who's there? Don't open the door, sir. Stranger, I've lost my way in the fog. Well, tell him there's but one road back to the mainland. Uh, leave this to me, Marthy. Where, uh, where are you heading for, stranger? Can you tell me how to get to Mrs. Ackley's place, Kazamane? Yes, I could, but I won't. Wait, don't close the door. I'd like to ask a few questions. Uh, questions, eh? Huh? Well, ask them, but I'll not warrant an answer to anybody going to that house. You needn't be afraid of me. Huh. I'm Captain Zeth. Uh, Fifty years I've sailed before the mast, and I'm not afraid of man, devil of the sea. Uh, who be you? I'll tell you this much, Captain Zeth. I'm yes? here to put an end to the thing that made your wife afraid to let you open this door. I can't see you out there in the dark, but... Uh, uh... Zeth! Huh? Those panthers, they've come down to the village again. What? Panthers? <laughs> Who's are they? The prophets. Uh, step into the house, stranger. They'll tear a man to pieces. <laughs> well, what ails you, Marthy? The blue light. It's him coming in the gate. He always carries it. It's him, the one that calls himself the prophet. Well, let him come. Get in the house, stranger. 
What? Where Murphy? There's nobody here. Where is that fellow gone? He was here a second ago. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he run for it. Jeff, what do you suppose that prophet fellow wants of us? Get away from the door, Murphy. I'll deal with him. Good evening, my good captain. Stop where you be. I'll not have the likes of you in my house. A stranger came here. His car is down the road. The spirit of the Ancient One told me of his coming. Who was the stranger? Where has he gone? To all your questions, I'll give you one answer. Get your howling beasts and your heathen godless self back to the house on the cliff, or I'll blow you to the very door of Hades. No man threatens the prophet and lives. Get out! Very well, Captain. Since you will not tell me, I will find him. My servants are watching his car. We will find him. <laughs> He'll need all the unearthly powers you claim to find a man in this fog. Good night. I'll find him. He can't be far away. <laughs> no. Not far away, but close to you. In the dark shadows and the swirling mist. Who speaks? I am looking for a man with blood on his hands. The blood of a minister and ten innocent people he murdered. Are you a man hiding in the fog? Do not try so hard to pierce the fog. You cannot see me, for I am the shadow. The shadow? A voice without physical presence? Only a voice? No, my friend. In my native India, such things are known. But not here. The powers of mesmerism have spread beyond the grey monastic walls of the yogi priest. Modern science has advanced their ancient arts. Perhaps, but I am still stronger than you. Strong enough to do what I have set out to and do. And what is that? I will not tell you, Shadow. And no one, not even you with your borrowed powers, shall stand in my way, for I, I am the Prophet. Prophet of the Ancient One. Master, master, the stranger, he does not return to the automobile, but a young woman is there waiting for him. So, could it be, Shadow, that you are the stranger we seek, that your companion waits for you? Baka. Yes, Master. Go quickly, I will follow. Seize the girl. She will be useful to us. Very useful. If I cannot reach the Shadow, I can reach his companion. Yes, Master. Matau and the Panthers, watch her. She will not escape. Do you hear, Shadow? Yes, I hear. Save her if you can. You say you are a man. If that is true, then my panthers will smell you out whether they can see you or not. There's the car. Aka, seize the girl. Matana, what a girl. Matana, low. Matana, low. Shall Take her to the house on the cliff. We will keep her with Isabel Colby. She shall be tortured until she tells us what she knows. At the beginning of this program, I made you a suggestion. To protect your family's health and save real money in the bargain, burn blue coal. Now, here's the reason for blue coal's superiority. This fine home fuel is selected Pennsylvania anthracite, an American product mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company. And anthracite supplies clean, uniform, healthful heat from cellar to attic, burned steadily, completely, down to a fine, powdery ash. So you see, anthracite combined all of the essentials necessary for perfect heating result. What's more, anthracite is the fuel that furnaces, parlor stoves, and cooking ranges in this part of the country were especially designed to burn. And the cream of all anthracite is blue coal. No wonder it is the largest selling brand of solid fuel in America. No wonder blue coal sales in Auburn, New York this winter show a 15% increase over sales for the same period a year ago. Blue coal is especially prepared for home use. Every carload is laboratory tested for purity and uniform size before shipment from the mine. And every piece of blue coal is trademarked with an unmistakable blue tint so that you can identify it at a glance. So when you're buying fuel, take a tip from Auburn, New York homeowner. Ask for blue coal by name. You can get it in four popular home sizes. 
egg, stove, chestnut, and pea. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. <laughs> Why did the prophet servants bring you here to Mrs. Ackley's house? I don't know. But who are you, and why are they keeping you locked up in this room? Well, I'm Isabel Colby. My father was Reverend Colby, the minister of the little fishing village down the cove. He's dead. They've murdered him. Yes, I know. But you, why are you here? I used to be Mrs. Ackley's companion and secretary before she brought this man, the prophet, to the house. But now, that Hindu has some sort of hold over, over her mind. He calls her a high priestess. And she let him lock me up in here. Oh, how terrible, Miss Colby. What is happening in this house to Mrs. Ackley and to you? Oh, I don't know. It has something to do with a, a ceremony that the prophet says he and Mrs. Ackley must perform. The climax of some strange religious ritual they go through day after day in Mrs. Ackley's private chapel. He's changed it into, into a place he calls the Temple of the Ancient One. This morning, he came here and said, I'm to be what he calls the Bride of Death. They're going to take me to that temple tonight. Do you know why? Yes. To kill me. Oh, no. Mrs. Ackley is the high priestess who's going to sacrifice me to that horrible deity they worship. <laughs> Don't give up hope, Isabel. Uh, There's still a chance we'll get out of this place, both of us. Lamont, Lamont, why didn't you come before it's too late? Maybe this is... Aka, unlock the door. <gasps> Don't let them take me. Don't... Isabel Colby, the time has come. The high priestess is waiting to perform her ceremony in the temple of the ancient. No, no. Matawa. Yes, master. Take the girl Isabel to the shrine. Tell the high priestess to prepare the girl and herself for the wedding of death. Come. My master commands. No, no. I won't get to handle this. Seize the strange girl. Let go of me. Yes, go. master. I kill her now. No. Matawa. Take the girl, Isabel, to the shrine. Wait there for me. Prepare the sacred fires. Purify the sword of the ancient one. The sacrificial altar is ready. And death is waiting for his bride. Yes, my father. No, no, you're going to murder me like you murdered my father. Now, strange girl, I will deal with you. <laughs> No, Prophet. You will deal with me. The Shadow. Oh, thank heavens you've come. You, the Shadow here? How? There are panthers chained at every door. It was easy, Prophet. Oh, I knew the Shadow would come. I knew he couldn't be far away. Oh, you do know the Shadow. This slinking coward who fears to show himself. Who hides himself in the shadows. Shadow, the Prophet is going to kill Reverend Colby's daughter. He's going to make Mrs. Ackley kill her in some fantastic ceremony. Yes. In a few minutes, she will be dead and you cannot stop it. Clever scheme. You've numbed the failing mind of Mrs. Ackley with drugs. Made her do your will, sign a fortune over to you. Your knowledge will not help you now, Shadow. You plan to have Mrs. Ackley commit murder, turn her over to the police, blame her for the death of Reverend Colby, and with a fortune in your hands, discard your role of prophet and disappear. You are clever, Shadow. Yes, that is my plan. It is a pity such a mind as yours will soon be lost to the world. Within an hour... After Mrs. Ackley has obligingly murdered the girl, Isabel, this house will burn. A tank of gasoline in the cellar will explode. And this will be the funeral pyre of the shadow and his beautiful young companion. But I must go now. They are waiting for me. <laughs> you are not going through that door. It is locked. You lie. It is. Aka! Stop! They cannot hear you. They're waiting for you in the temple, and I have the key to the door. You are not too clever, Shadow. Give me the key to the door, and I shoot this girl. Take that gun away from her head. Throw the key upon that table, quick. Don't give him the key. I'm not afraid of him. I shall count to three, Shadow. If I don't get the key, it's a pity. But this beautiful girl shall die. One. You wouldn't. Two. Three. Ah. You are wise. Shadow. You fiendish devil. I'll show you the shadow can do more than warn. Threaten. Take that. Oh. Oh, Lamont. 
Oh, Ellen Mont, are you all right? Yes, but I'm afraid I knocked the prophet out cold. Margot, take that key. Get out of here. Down the hall. There's a door. Take the prophet's gun. Drive to that cottage I visited tonight. Get Captain Zeth to call the villagers. Tell them they can help to avenge the murder of their friends. What are you going to do? They may kill Isabel before I can get help. Never mind. You hurry and get help. All right. I'll go out. I'll get Captain Zeth to round up the people of the village, and then I'll come back. Very well, Margot. I may need your help. Come back to this room. I'll be back in a few minutes. Yes, Margot? I saw Captain Zeth. The people of the village are coming. He's calling them together. You can't wait for him, Margot. Beyond that door, at the head of the stairs, death is waiting for Isabel Colby. The prophet's followers are there awaiting his appearance. But the prophet's still lying here, unconscious, on the floor. Nevertheless, he will not disappoint them. Lamont, I, I don't understand. Margot, I'm going to ask you to do a very dangerous thing. I want you to put on the prophet's robe, cover your face with a hood... And walk in there as the prophet. Oh, very well, I'll do anything I can. You know that. Do not show your face till you reach the altar. Don't speak. Keep close to Isabel Colby. Watch Mrs. Ackley and leave the rest to me. Yes, Lamont, I, I understand. I'm ready. Kalavara. <laughs> Metanalo, Badamoth, O ancient one, vision of eternal life, before the, thy altar the youthful maiden wait, thy ancient sword, her spirit, to release unto thine own. Her blood is pledged, her soul is thine. Metanalo, Etilasi, Kalavara, Badamoth, all is in readiness, Master. Metawa, look. The hood covers the Master's face. The hour has come for the ritual to begin. See, Master. The girl Isabel is last to the altar of the Ancient One. The sacred fires burn in the jeweled torches. All is in readiness, Master. All as you have commanded. Matawa, bring Mrs. Ackley. Prepare her to make the sacrifice. I... I am ready. Ready to do the will of the prophet. To plunge this sword into the girl's heart. But I am afraid. Help me. Give me the sacred drug to give me strength. The will to do the things you have told me I must do. If I am to be high priestess to the Ancient One. Look, Matawa. It is strange. The Master does not speak. Does not answer us. He goes to the shrine alone. Wait. He turns. He is lifting the hood of his robes. It, look. It is not the Prophet. It is a beautiful girl. It is the strange girl, the one the master stayed below to question about this shadow. What has happened to our master? Why do you wear the robes of the prophet? Aka, Metawa, you have been tricked. The man you serve as a god is a rogue, a charlatan, a fake. The voice, Metawa, that is not the voice of the prophet. It is not the strange girl speaking. See? Her lips have not moved. No. It is the voice of the shadow. The shadow. The master warned us to beware of the shadow, Aka. Matawa. The master must be dead. The shadow has killed him. Prophet, the time has come. I must drive this sword into the heart of the bride of death. I will not fail. Don't, don't do it. They're tricking you, making you murder me. Then they'll kill you. No, they'll kill you. No, I shall be a high priestess. I shall live forever like the prophet, like the ancient one. Mrs. Ackley. Mrs. Ackley. Drop that sword. Drop that sword, Mrs. Ackley. Drop it, I say. Drop the sword. Yes. Drop the sword. Taka. Taka, look. <laughs> This shadow has broken the master's power over this woman. I am free now. Free the spell. 
What have I done? He is stronger than the master. We must escape. We must get away. You will never get away. Never leave this house. Parker, the tower, the prophet. That guy is wearing my robes. Draw your knives. Kill him. Kill him, I command you. No. No, prophet. We obey you no more. Obey me. You trick us. Make us kill. Say you are the true prophet of the ancient one. You defy me. Don't. Ah. Drop the knife. Ah. See? The blood runs in his veins. He tells us he cannot die. Oh. Now we shall see. The foes. Now. Now the shadow will destroy you. He is dead. The shadow spoke the truth, Matawa. He was not the true prophet. The true prophet of the ancient one was blessed with life. Everlasting. You are right, Arka. Quick, we must get away. Away from this shadow. You cannot escape for long. Your sins will find you out. Oh, yes. Isabel! Isabel! Oh, you're safe. safe. Oh, thank you. Your Why don't you tell me who you are? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I must remain anonymous until my work is finished. I will have to continue being known only as the Shadow. Now here is John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with a few words of heating advice for you. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. During the month of March, when the weather is very changeable, a cold spell and a warm spell, some homeowners get the impression that they're economizing on fuel by putting only a little coal on the furnace fire during milder days. As a matter of fact, that is one of the surest ways to actually waste fuel. Shallow fires burn coal quickly, have a tendency to go out easily, can't deliver sufficient heat, and make repeated refueling necessary. The truly economical way to fire a furnace is to keep a deep fire bed at all times. It should always be up to a level with the bottom of the fire door. In mild weather, if you like, you can leave a little heavier layer of ash on the grates. This will keep the fire burning very slowly, yet keep enough coal burning to provide sufficient heat should the outside temperature drop suddenly. Let me impress you with this important point. After putting uh, fresh coal on the fire, be sure to leave an exposed spot of live coals directly in front of your fire door. The hot spot will act as a pilot light and ignite the gases that come up from fresh coal. Allow these gases to become ignited before checking the fire. If you follow this method of firing throughout the changeable March weather, you will get the utmost in efficiency and economy from your furnace. However, if you still have difficulty in properly heating your home, call your nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to send a John Barclay serviceman to inspect your furnace. This service is free to blue coal customers. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, don't fail to take advantage of the free John Barclay service. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. And a similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> As you sow evil, so shall you reap evil. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen, and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort.